everybody and Labadiana once again from a rather snowy Smalaninki. And in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the Lithuanian press ban. So, as you may be aware, the Russian Empire was controlling Lithuania from 1795 until 1918, the end of World War One, And in that time, basically between the years of 1865 and 1904, the Russian Empire introduced a ban on the use of kind of Lithuanian in its written Latin form. It's important to note it was it was the Latin alphabet and the use of that which was the ban was on. Um, so yeah, we're going to delve into that today. I'm going to talk to you kind of the origins of the ban. Why did it happen? How was it enforced? And some of the effects on, I suppose, both the, the Lithuanian populace as well as the Russian Empire. And well, anyway, before going into too much detail, it's actually quite a good place to be in Smalaninki for this video, because actually when the ban was in place, Smalaninki was was part of, of Prussia. And so this was actually being the border town with, with Lithuania. This actually would have seen plenty of books come through it. So yeah, Smalaninki, great location to be for for this this video. And anyway, let's let's move on to the important stuff. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you you learn something from from a video about one of the most important kind of events and time periods really for for Lithuania. So, to start off this this video, we need to kind of look at why was the Lithuanian press ban introduced? And well, in 1863, we saw the, the January uprising, which was where basically sort of combined Lithuanian and Polish forces, I've just got a blast of snow there, um, com well, combined Lithuanian and Polish forces, anyway, came together to try and restore the, the Lithuanian Polish Commonwealth. Unfortunately, they were, well, they were defeated by the Russian Empire. And anyway, in the aftermath of this, there was, I suppose, an attempt by the Russian government to Russify the, the population, to, to, you know, stop this from ever happening again, basically. And they introduced many controls on, on life. However, the one that we're going to talk about in this video was was the ban on uh, the use of the Lithuanian language in its written Latin form. Now we're going to talk about how was this ban enforced. And well, during the, during the ban from 1865 until 1904, we saw over 3,000 people arrested for either smuggling the books, like across the border, for either distributing the books, or just basically being in possession of a, a banned book. And so this was one of the, the aspects, obviously, was, you know, the, the criminal and arresting side of it. But also there was the other side, which was how Russia itself tried to enforce the ban and it did this by essentially making people use Lithuanian in a written Cyrillic form. Now this didn't really work. First of all, many people thought that the books weren't really suitable for, for consumption and uh, the, the translation, I don't know, it, it didn't work anyway. And Actually, throughout the whole time period of the ban, bear in mind that this was about 40 years, there was only 55 uh, Lithuanian Cyrillic publications published. So, bear in mind as well with that fact that um, over half of these were actually published in the first 10 years, whilst Russia 
did try and promote people using the Cyrillic uh, Lithuanian form. No one really took to it, and because it was kind of it didn't work, the main form of of enforcing the ban was basically on arresting people and stopping the use of uh, Lithuanian in in the Latin form. Now, the uh, people did try and sort of circumvent the ban uh, by using the Gothic script instead, but this was also banned and, and stopped in, I think it was 1872. You may wonder, well, how did the Lithuanians kind of get around this ban? And, well, the Lithuanians started publishing uh, books and publications in, uh, in, in other places because obviously it wasn't possible to do that in the Russian Empire. So we saw some books actually coming all the way from the USA. They were published there, uh, but a large majority of the things that were published were actually done in the Prussian Empire and kind of around Lithuania Minor, so the part of Prussia that had quite a lot of Lithuanians living in, generally, yeah, East Prussia. Now, what was actually quite amusing for me, I think, in a strange twist of fate, was that the, the major town that was involved in, in printing Lithuanian publications is actually was called Tilsit, should I say. Now it's part of the Kaliningrad exclave, kind of bordering uh, Lithuania, and it's called Sovetsk. So it's actually part of Russia now, um, but it was a major, a majorly important location in, you know, in, pu in publishing Lithuanian language publications in the, the Lithuanian press ban. The Lithuanian press ban really had, well, some really unintended, unforeseen negative consequences for the Russian Empire. And I suppose really in a way positive uh, consequences for the Lithuanian people, because this ban, rather than Russifying the population and kind of, I suppose, ending the Lithuanian language, especially in Latin form, well, it helped to create like a strong sense of kind of Lithuanian identity. It also gave the Lithuanian people like a common enemy, the Russian Empire, because of this policy. So it really actually was was quite negative for Russia and, and, and it's actually been suggested by, by different historians that, to be honest, without the Russian press ban, it could have even been possible that really like the Lithuanian language, it could have even, you know, like it could just basically have been an afterthought in history. So the press ban actually helped grow the Lithuanian language rather than the uh, the intended consequence of kind of ending Lithuanian language, especially in its Latin form. There was, however, a uh, a negative effect for the Lithuanian population and that was the kind of illiteracy actually um, well it increased in in the time period of the, the Lithuanian press ban because with the the sense that schools were kind of used in the, the policy of Russification first of all there was a shortage of teachers but um, secondly Lithuanians didn't want their kids to be going to school where they wouldn't be allowed to speak in Lithuanian with each other. Um, they obviously wouldn't actually be able to obviously write in the way that they should be. So many Lithuanian children were, were left illiterate as, as a result of the Lithuanian press ban. And well, that kind of marks an end to, to our, our video. Um, Obviously in 1904, the ban was, was overturned and, and yeah, well, I hope you've enjoyed this, this video. Obviously it's a short video. It's like with any kind of historical thing, there's plenty of, plenty of maybe notable people that, that should have been mentioned in this, plenty of these, these really brave um, Lithuanian book smugglers 
you know, willing to to put their their kind of their I suppose their freedoms on the on the line to make sure that their their language stayed alive and kept on being used. But the question I'd like to to ask you really is what do you think? Do you think that the I suppose especially the Lithuanian language would would even exist today without the um this this Lithuanian press ban? You know, it's an interesting one to contemplate. Who knows, eh? Maybe if Russia hadn't, the Russian Empire hadn't have done it, we might not even have this this beautiful, rather difficult, but beautiful Lithuanian language that we do have now. So, yeah, if you are interested in finding out more about the Lithuanian press ban, I recommend you, you know, kind of doing your using that good old good old internet and uh, and having having a look because it's a, it's an interesting piece of history, and I hope. Um, I hope you've learned something from from this video. So it's uh, it's Ike from me. I'm going to get back home and read my uh, copy of Savite, my uh, favourite Lithuanian language public publication. <laughs> okay, see ya.